hello and welcome back and today I want to talk about SSD once again. It's been a big, big month for SSD here on the channel. Throughout this summer I've been talking about PC based SSD testing, gaming, PS5 SSD stuff. We've talked about um, NAS stuff with SSD caching and tiered storage. But a lot of the time that is focused on one thing more than any other, PCIe Gen 4 SSDs, kind of the new generation of SSDs that are able to take advantage of the either all or a large amount of saturation of the possible 8,000 megabytes per second possible via PCIe Gen 4. And now that we're seeing more and more affordable motherboards from 70 to 80 to 100 pounds of all things starting to arrive with PCIe Gen 4 expansion slots or M2 NVMe SSD slots that are PCIe Gen 4, suddenly not only has the price gone down on a number of these SSDs, but also just the sheer scale of what they can do and how home users, not even prosumers, can take advantage of this performance. Now, one of the earliest brands to get on the production train was Sabrent. In the first generation of these SSDs that arrived to market, it was the following. It was the likes of the Fire CUDA 520, it was the WD Black SN 850, it was the Samsung 980 Pro, and then there was the Sabrent. And Sabrent brought out two different PCIe Gen 4 SSDs. One we talked about a lot. This is the Rocket 4 Plus. This is their top end. This is their drive that knocks out 7,000 megabytes per second sequential read and right there at the five and six thousands at the high top end. However, at the more affordable tier, they even supplied an NVMe SSD Gen 4 known as the Rocket 4, it's the Rocket NVMe 4, no plus, and this one provides 5,000 plus megabytes per second sequential read and 4,400 megabytes per second sequential write. Not only that, I tested this on the PS5 and it works. The PS5 itself rated it at 5,600 megabytes per second, which I found super weird, by the way, but it did do it. And although that's in beta, and therefore I'd advise you to maybe hold back for now until full classification of those drives are out there, it's still a very positive sign that they're more affordable drive, that at each tier of capacity is a great deal more affordable than their pro tier, it makes it a very presentable option for a number of people that have bought PCIe Gen 4 equipped systems be for slot or for M2 and I wanted to take advantage of it but I've looked at the price of the top end which by the way is now being scalped to hell and therefore the prices on those are extreme and looked at this tier and gone do you know what I'll have me a little bit of that now what's good about it first and foremost I've utilized this drive in its plus series before and it impressed me both in terms of performance and build quality. I even like the little case that arrives in. I think it's a lovely little touch. If we open it up inside there, we've got our first time set up instructions. We've got the little card there, the little phone protector, and then we have the drive itself there in front of you. Now, it's worth highlighting that bit there at the top isn't just a label. For those that followed my other videos when we talked about the Sabrent Rocket 4 Plus, you'll know that that's a metal panel that acts as additional heat dissipation when the drives in your PC or console system. It's not enough and you will need a heat sink, but it's a little extra feature having a metal panel there on the top that I'm genuinely a big, big fan of. Also with this, there's also a dedicated heat sink that you can get this as well as their own Q4 heating system there for their QLC series as well. So they have those big chunky heat sinks that again, do an incredible job of heating your system with coils all the way around there in copper to really assist the heat dissipation of a drive that's installed inside there. Now, what are the things about this drive I'm less keen on? It has to be said, I'm still not a massive fan of Sabrent's policy on the warranty. It's got five years of warranty, but you only get one year unless you register. It's really easy to register. It doesn't cost you anything. You just follow the 3D barcode on the back, or you can just go straight to their own website and use your serial. It takes no time at all. It doesn't cost you anything. But I don't like that there's that extra step that you have to register your warranty in order to get the full five years. The controller inside, unlike the Rocket Plus, it takes advantage of the fires on E16, not the E18, which is why that performance threshold there doesn't max out at the 7000s. It takes advantage of NVMe 1.4 revision 
and it takes advantage of the 96 layer NAND. So not only has it got that great NAND that we saw in the previous its predecessor, but thanks to the benchmarks and those performance being a little bit lower, the durability is higher and therefore it makes the drive quite desirable to those that want that performance but they're going to be using it a great deal more regularly over time perhaps they're using a system that isn't going to be able to max out those performance benchmarks internally and therefore because they don't have some mental 8 or 12 cores eon because they don't have 16 gig of ddr5 and they don't have some whacked out gpu card chances are they're not going to be able to push the ssd to the steady heights of 7000 and therefore they shouldn't spend money that they're not going to be able to take advantage of in terms of resources and hardware which is again where this drive lives now throughout the course of the testing when we move over to the test machine shortly we have to really ascertain two things the first one is does it live up to the reported benchmarks obviously on screen we're going to keep their own reported benchmarks on screen to compare and contrast uh, the system we're going to be utilizing in case i don't mention it is a six core i5 11th gen system using windows 10 pro with 16 gig of ddr4 memory and it has got a fully utilized pcie gen 4 times 4 m2 nvme slot so there's no excuses for this to not at least get down close to those reported maximums but the other thing we want to look at is how those benchmarks compare to those of the Sabrent Rocket Plus. Obviously, those are going to be higher. But what's going to be interesting is, given the price difference, is that a suitable trade-off against that endurance factor there, which is something that we're going to find out with this drive in the test machine. So, enough of that. Let's get on the machine. Okay, so we're on the desktop here of our PC for testing. There it is, the Sabrent Rocket 2TB. I've already mounted the drive there. And indeed, there is the machine that we're utilizing today. It is an 11th Gen i5 6-core processor, 16 gig of memory inside. It's Windows 10 Pro. I don't have any kind of uh, high-performance graphics card on this system, which might knock a few of the little tests as the top end of some of those off. Indeed, if we go a little bit further and we'll make our way into Crystal Disk, sorry about the black screen there, that's just when we're opening up apps, we can see there in the Sprint Rocket, uh, the Sprint Rocket with its own first party heatsink, it is utilizing PCIe Gen 4. There's the drive, we got it all connected there. It's not been on very long at all, and now we can make our way into this drive. Now, a lot of the testing I'm going to perform off camera simply because the recording software I'm using, OBS, does a terrible job when it comes to working at the same time as benchmark software. Yes, I could use a capture card externally, but you've got to remember using an external capture card, again, would factor in more and more layers into this setup, and unfortunately, I'm just one guy. So we are going to work around that. Just to give you an example, if I load up, um, AJA Performance Benchmark utilizing that 2TB and we run uh, the test there on a 1 gig test file we're not getting the performance benchmarks we'd like because of OBS and this indeed will look a lot better later on so what I'm going to do uh, is I'm going to come away from the screen recording and perform some tests those tests are going to include several tests on Atto Disk Benchmark it's going to be three file types then it's going to be three individual tests on Crystal Disk again I'm sorry the screen keeps going black that's just the Windows permission popping up on screen that blocks out on OBS. We're also going to be running a SSD benchmark, which is also going to do even more testing there. Again, all of these are going to be done on multiple file types, multiple times. And then finally, we're going to go back to AJA at the end with some performance benchmarks there on the frame capture at the bottom. So there we go. These are the tests that we are going to perform. So what I'm going to do now is start testing these drives and I'm going to bring you guys back in around 15, 20 minutes with all of these tests completed. Let's go. Okay, so the testing has completed and now we can start making our way through the results. But before we do that, I do think it's important that we remain relative. Here is the left-hand side of the screen here where Sabrent's own benchmarks are listed on here. This is their own review, talking about, oh, I'll say review, it's mainly their description of the product. We are looking at the 2TB model, of course, and if we scroll right on down, we can find their own um, performance benchmarks that they say speeds of up to. So they're saying up to speeds of 5,000 megabytes per second read and 4,400 megabytes per second write. So again, those are what they state this drive can do. So without further ado, let's have a look and see 
how things stack up. So let's highlight that there because it might come in useful. Um, first test is going to be the most straightforward, of course. It is Crystal Disk Benchmark. We did the test utilizing um, a 1 gig, a 4 gig, and a 16 gigabyte test file. And as you can see, in every scenario, a sequential read, and again, sequential isn't really real world use in some ways, we can see that it hit 5,000 megs every single time. So it did hit that 5K that the description there did highlight. However, uh, in terms of write, we did seem to max out at 4,200 or so, with the maximum being 4,245 of the largest test file there. Now again, as we made our way through random access and then more balanced access over read versus write ratios, which again, those that are involved in gaming may be well aware of, we can see there that it did hit in terms of the IOPS um, of between 500,000 and 700,000 there on the IOPS. And if we, with the specifications on this drive, I believe the specifications were 700,000 megabytes per second IOPS there. Unfortunately, it's not listed there on the page. So it did live within the benchmark that they were suggesting. So again, as far as crystal disk testing goes, it does kind of verify a lot of what they are saying. But next, we'll make our way into Atto Disk Benchmark, where we can have a little look at both read and write performance and um, IOPS there. So once again, we used uh, three different uh, test file types, a 256 megabyte, a one gigabyte, and a four gigabyte file. And as you can see, in terms of read, it exceeded um, five gigabytes or 5,000 megabytes per second comfortably in a number of areas, going as high as 5,223 sorry, uh, 5,240, I should say, right there, over there at the block pattern 512 kilobit. Um, so a kilobyte. I've got to say, on terms of all three of those, it does verify what they're saying. Now, the write was, again, it never broke into the four gigabytes. All the way through, it never broke into the four gigabytes. Another thing I'm keen to highlight on this drive is... It ran quite hot, even with the heat sink attached. The temperature, even now, we've not touched this drive now for approximately five to seven minutes, and that temperature has still not dipped lower than the low 40s. It got as high as 52, 53. So this drive does run hot. It does run noticeably hotter, I would say, than that of the Sabrent Rocket 4 Plus that we saw before. So you can't help but get the impression that this drive is being pushed quite hard there. And again, it is being reflected on the temperature stuff there. Now, if we move over to the IOPS of this drive, again, IOPS in Atto here did kind of live up to what it was saying. But again, because we're not using the smallest block pattern, the result is that the IOPS aren't really as uh, reliably viewable as we saw there with the 4K IOPS in each of those individual tests. And generally, uh, generally, you find out the best reports for IOPS, keeping things lovely and small, because IOPS is about how many individual operations it can do if you remove the overhead of larger operations. So again, we include these, but again, they are included in the context of 4 gigabyte, 1 gigabyte, and 250 megabyte. Uh, next, ASSSD, another example there. Oh, wrong one there. Uh, another example, bring that up there again. We used a one gigabyte test file. Again, I'm not doing hide the card. One gigabyte, three gigabyte, and five gigabyte there. And again, sequential performance always seems to be a little lower on AS than most other bench testing softwares because of the way it does things. And we are running this in um, uh, the megabytes per second there. But again, we can switch over to the IOPS for each of those. And have a good idea how that's going to look there. And again, the IOPS there living in the five to 700,000 radius. And again, as we got bigger files, that did alter. But again, fairly good response there across all three. And again, quite indicative of this being a drive that's living up to what they're saying it can do. Even under AES SSD's rather harsh critique of these drives. So again, the last thing I wanted to look at, of course, was looking at um, AJA. If we bring AJA up to the top, you can ignore the uh, ongoing test there at the top because generally when you are testing NVMEs and you go for the larger file types, because of the speed at which you're putting data in, 
The result is you kind of over flood uh, the DRAM, the memory, the cache. So you end up with a scenario where it's just not feasible to use this. But what we look at is the graph at the bottom. Now the graph at the bottom gives us some indication of the hits on the drive. It's also worth bearing in mind that these are being depicted the other way around, as in uh, the system accessing. So even though it says right there, that's actually technically read for what we are doing right now. So you could ignore that disk write, disk read, but it's actually reversed in this test scenario from the PC host client relationship within the system. But again, write performance there getting quite high in, into close to four and a half thousand there, but eking there, I would say around 4,000 on the nose. And then in terms of uh, the performance down the other side, hitting what 4,125 and pretty consistently living at 4,000 to 4,100. So again, respectable performance there for that 16 gigabyte HD test file within AJA. No caching enabled, none of the background stuff ruining our test. So I would say, based on everything I've seen so far, the Sprint Rocket Drive definitely brings what it promises to the table. So Brent have not tried to bend the truth here. They've not tried to oversell a drive. And definitely when you look at this drive and you look at the price of this drive in comparison to that of the gold um, plated one there, we'll get those to the top and we look at the, how they compare, you're able to see that there is clearly a distinction and there is clearly a reason why these drives have a very distinct price difference between them. Bring that up there. And we see that one at 499 with the other one being 429 with a clear difference there between them. Still, nonetheless, there's a reason for this drive being more expensive. And the fact that the rocket drive runs a little hotter, has a lower benchmark, I think explains that price difference. And also, if you're not looking to max out or you don't think you're going to be able to max out this drive here, this makes this one a very suitable alternative. But thank you so much for watching. This has been my review of the Sprint 2TB Rocket NVMe, the Non Plus series. Do check out my review of that drive to give you some idea about how those drives compare in terms of their performance. All of the results today are going to be utilized very, very soon uh, in a written review over on NAS Compares, and we'll be directly comparing the Rocket and the Rocket Plus very shortly in a follow up video in similar test scenarios, just to give you some idea where that extra money has been spent between these two drives. That's $70, where has it gone? Thank you so much for watching. Click like if you enjoyed the video, subscribe to learn more, take advantage of the free advice section in the description below over at Nascan Place. Genuinely free advice there. We're not gonna ask them for any money. We don't ask for donations unless you want to give a donation. Um, and it is manned by two human beings with you, nothing from your email. It's right there. Why not take advantage? Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.